Hello again, how's it going guys? I thought today we would do a tour of the bottom end of the garden. I built a square foot garden this year for the first time in a long time and you know it's been a pleasure to grow, it really has. I'd forgotten that it allows you to grow lots of different types of vegetables in a small space. Because over the last few years I'd been growing a bed full of this and a bed full of that when sometimes just a quarter of a bed was all that you really needed. I think there's even four celery plants growing in here somewhere and that's something I said I wasn't going to bother trying to grow again but it allows you that kind of room. We'll take another look at this bed again in a month or so's time just to see how much it's changed and it will change. It's one of the great things about square foot gardening. The bed is constantly changing. These are the heritage peas. In the first bed we have Neplus Ultra and in the other bed we have Kemp Blue. I uh, haven't seen any peas on them yet or any flowers but they are growing well. We are still harvesting asparagus and we're leaving some behind to grow on. The two different beds have asparagus of different maturity but it's really easy to tell which ones are the older crowns and which ones are the newer crowns. Um, I think we will harvest the asparagus for about another couple of weeks and then we'll just leave it all to grow out. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> A couple of years ago I wanted more rhubarb and locally grown crowns seem to be a little bit expensive so about 18 months ago Giant Dormouse sent me some seed. Now I think there's about five different types of rhubarb here and about 15 plants and this one here has got a seed I probably should have taken care of it before it grew this big. But here we are this is what can be grown from seed inside 18 months. I always get the feeling that the onions are behind where they should be at this time of year when in reality they're about where they need to be. Forcing the onions any earlier may cause them to go to seed and that's not something that we want. Over the next 60 days or so the onions are going to grow at an alarming rate. I just need to make sure that this bed is weeded. Now I'm probably going to give these a feed sometime later this week. This is the first load of potatoes that I sown. Um, they're not all early, so some of them are late season potatoes. I haven't watered them at all but uh, we've had quite a bit of rain over the last couple of weeks. And I do notice that there's one or two that have no leaves coming from the pots. And that I put down to my poor storage technique of the potatoes during the last winter. The beans in the row furthest away from the sun were started in modules and the other few rows were direct sown. Now I don't think there's going to be much of a significant difference between the two but I will say the advantage of the ones started in the modules is that you can be assured of germination. I think for that reason alone I'm going to go back to starting all my beans in small cells. I've never had a problem with transplanting the beans so to me it makes perfect sense. The scapes on the hard neck garlic should be coming in any day now. It was a bit of a strange winter for the garlic. We had quite a few frosts but on the whole it was reasonably mild so I'm hoping that the bulbs have formed. I was wondering if I should give the garlic some food. I don't recall ever feeding my garlic before and I don't remember seeing anybody else feed theirs. So if you do feed your garlic or you have fed your garlic in the past, please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know how you got on. I'm growing a few types of zucchini, an F1 called Elite, a regular dark green variety and I'm also growing the Willy Keeney squash as I call it which was bred from seed originally sent to me from TFX2. I need to take some runners from the strawberries this year because these plants are now a couple of years old. 
Uh, I also have some strawberry plants that I grew from seed. So what I'll probably do is get a whole bunch of new strawberry plants and overwinter them in the greenhouse. And then come next spring, we'll build a whole new strawberry bed. Half of this parsnip bed were sown from chitted seed or they are transplants and the other half was direct sown a few days ago. I find good parsnips to be a bit of a pain in the arse to grow but we do like them so I guess we got to rise to the challenge. Now these should be ready in the late autumn and we should be cropping them all the way through winter and right into the middle of next spring. This is the potato bed. The two main varieties I'm growing are Norlam Red and Yukon Gold, but I did notice a couple of gaps and so I dropped in a couple of sprouting potatoes from the bottom of the pantry. The first few rows of the beetroot bed were transplanted from modules and the rest of the bed was directly sown at the time of transplanting. I have a few cauliflower and broccoli plants, not too many. There might be a couple of cabbages in there too. Uh, I don't really grow brassicas very well. Uh, we get a lot of white fly and caterpillars. I am going to try and overwinter some cabbages this year just to see if they do any better than the ones that don't grow very well in the summertime. I suppose I could use netting, but it's not something that I particularly want to do. The broccoli and the collie aren't too bad, it's mainly the cabbages that I suffer with. This year I'm going to be growing the cucumbers in these pails. I'm growing three types, mercury, early fortune and a pickling cucumber. I put these plants out earlier this week. I'm determined to grow Chinese cabbages. Now, for most people, they have an issue with bolting, but for me, the main issue I'm having is with slugs and snails. They seem to love these things. I do have a type here which has bolted, but it, it's supposed to. This type's eaten for its flowers and its shoots and stems. In order for me to grow Chinese cabbages, successfully I'm going to have to rethink the way I grow them and I'm going to have to deal with my slug and snail problem. In this area I'm going to be growing pumpkins and squashes. I've started a few seeds off and I'll be placing them out over the next couple of weeks. Well that's taking a look at the bottom end of the garden and right now I think it's time for a beer. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed ding the bell until next time cheers